Hello and welcome to Learning Economics. In this lecture, we shall talk about lab and field experiments in economics. In our last lecture, we discussed the importance of experiments in economics and their role in understanding the world around us. Today, we shall discuss these two broad types of experiments. However, before discussing lab and field experiments, let's take a minute to discuss sufficient conditions for a valid experiment. Smith identified a set of sufficient conditions for control over preferences to be established. These are number one, non-satiation, which means that the increase in the reward should strictly be preferred. Next, saliency, that is, whatever treatment is being given that should dominate the behavior. Third, reward dominance, which means that the reward must dominate all kinds of costs. Next is privacy, that is, an agent should know only his or her outcome and reward. Now let's talk about conducting lab experiments. Main steps in conducting lab experiments are number one, to select the participants randomly. One of the ways is to invite participants to be the part of the experiment without telling them what it will be. Then among interested, select your desired number of participants randomly. Then give them instructions which elaborate work, incentives, anonymity, etc. It is better to give instructions in written form and then give them time to ask questions and make them familiarize with instructions. Then give them the task to perform. Treatment. Treatment means the intervention that makes some difference for some participants in the experiment. Then take a survey, ask about demographic characteristics, income, space, etc. These variables can be used as controls. Then pay the participants sufficient reward, but that is but it is better that reward is linked to their performance in experiment. Now get outcomes and analyze them. For analysis, some economists suggest that you should write your program prior to conducting the experiment so that the data may not influence your choice of analysis methodology. Now, let's talk about instructions. It is better to give standard written instructions and protocol to, to the participants. The context must be neutral. The choice of words is very critical. Neutral words that do not give any specific signal should be used. The instructions should not give any clue to the participants to behave in any specific way. And keep in mind that never deceive your subject. Now let's elaborate more about treatment. Treatment may be a set of instructions, incentives, or institutions that create a difference for some participants in experiment and influence their choice or actions. To see what difference created by the treatment, it must be compared with baseline or status quo situation. It is strongly recommended that you should not take more than one factors at a time. Now, the question is how to design the treatment? There are two ways of doing it called between subjects and within subjects. These are illustrated as that is. 
out of total participants. You divide half into control group and half into treatment groups. Then this is called a between subjects treatment design. But once you take all the participants in control group and then you take all the same participants into treatment group, then it is called as within subjects. Both have their separate advantages and disadvantages. Now, let's talk about advantages of lab experiment. These are, number one, the researcher has enhanced control over the proceedings. Therefore, the effect of other factors is weak. Replicability of lab experiments can be very easy as these are low cost experiments compared with field studies and also that their proceedings are carefully noted. The experiments have strong internal validity, but they have weak external validity. Strong internal validity permits correct casual inferences, but weak external validity is because of problem of induction and problem of representativeness. Problem of induction means, will the behavioral regularities observed in the lab persist in real life situation or not? Whereas problem of representativeness means, are experimental subjects and situation representative of real world or not? Now, these are some fatal errors that are sometimes done in lab experiments. The experimenter should try to avoid this. Now we move on from lab experiments to field experiments. In conventional lab experiments, we have standard subject pool, normally university students, abstract framing, we create situation and imposed set of rules. That is, we define the exchange rate, we define the value of the artificial goods, we define the wage rate, etc. Next is artificial lab experiments. In this, we have a non-standard subject pool. That is, we may invite people from any specific industry to be the part of the experiment instead of doing it with university students. Next, frame field experiment. In this, the field context is in either commodity, task, or information set. Next is natural field experiment. Here, the environment is one where subjects naturally undertake the tasks and where subjects do not know that they are in an experiment. According to list, field experiments offer a distinctive and new source of empirical evidence. which can then be compared, contrasted, reconciled, and eventually intertwined with evidence from non-experimental and lab methods. Field experiments offer an immediate opportunity to specify and address the economic questions of interest, rather than writing and hoping for a natural event or a cost iron econometric specification that would allow the researcher to address the issue clearly. Field experiments also offer economists the possibility of an improved connection from economic theory and empirical evidence to the real world. 
built on a deeper contextual understanding of real world issues and institutions. Field experiments avoid strict control of the lab, predict field behavior, which is closer to day-to-day -day behavior of the decision maker. Coupled with lab experiments, field experiments provide a sharper and more conventional way to understand the issues clearly and precisely. It deviates from the lab because the subjects are recruited from outside the classroom. We use field goods rather than valuation and use field contexts rather than abstract terminologies. The examples of lab field differences may be the real effort task versus induced value effort. According to Harrison and List, there are six important criteria about field experiments that must be kept in mind. Now, the subject pool consists of general people who are into earning or work since a number of years and their prospect about things is different than of students. Nature of information subjects bring to the task is not much controlled by the research. In field experiments, often real goods are used which have real values in them and people understand that. Nature of task or trading rules are applied. Nature of the stakes of the stakeholders involved may be quite complex and different. Nature of the environment that the subjects operate in that can influence their choices. Experimental sacrifices control, hence there are more chances that noise may creep in. These are difficult to replicate because of high cost and specific conditions of field. Moreover, it is difficult to generalize the results to other environments and to other populations sometimes. There is also a control validity trade-off that is low internal but high external validity. There are some of the tips given by Nobel laureate economists. These are That's all about this lecture. Please give your feedback in comments and subscribe to my channel for more on economics. Thank you and goodbye.